Hi, I'm Dixie Michelle, and today what I want to talk about is uh, constructing these mandolins. Uh, I'm making a series of mandolins. I put other videos up about these very mandolins, and these are unique in that I use a different approach to the mandolin, different way of constructing it. And what I want to explain with this video is somewhat what I'm doing. Here. That's my dog Scrapper right there. He just bumped the camera. So, what I'm using for a truss rod, my system is embedded in this neck. And there's a very thin piece of wood glued on top of it, but the truss rod itself is made out of this half by half steel tubing. You can buy this in any hardware store. Um, I cut a piece to length. I route a hole for it that's just a little bit deeper than this is thick and then glue a thin piece of wood in on top of it to hold it in there. Now, what that does with the neck is it makes it very rigid. And then that idea is continued all the way through the body by this same piece of steel being screwed to the bottom of this member that sticks inside the mandolin. What I'm showing you here is the mandolin body how, and how this piece sticks inside. And this is, the fingerboard comes down to the end of this. So, when you put this other piece of steel here, it runs all the way through the body, this same piece of steel. So, what that does for the mandolin, it gives it a lot of sustain, number one. But the main thing I do it for is stability. In uh, hot and humid weather, coming from cold to hot, from humid to dry, normal guitars and mandolins are always changing, and the strings are always pulling up on them. So they're always a little bit different than they were the day before. But what I'm trying to do with this is make it, every time you pick it up, it's going to be pretty much in tune like he set it down, because the weather and the climate doesn't affect it nearly as much because of this system. So, to help myself in making a bunch of these, I've set my gauge to this angle, which during the first one, I determined that the angle is this. So, what I'm gonna do is just transfer what I'm learning here on this first one to make all of them. And that'll make it easy. I don't have to rethink it every time. So I hope that explains what I'm doing here. You also notice here that my uh, bracing system is quite different from other people's. And that it's, it's quite, uh, everybody's copying Gibson's, what, what's happening in the mandolins. There's no other, there's no other mandolin. When Gibson invented this thing and the Gibson company came up with it, Lloyd Lohr came up with it in uh, 1921, 22. Uh, they, they put F-holes in their mandolins so it looked like a violin. He thought that'd be a good idea, but then he decided, well, you need these two tone bars, he called it, running longitudinally in here with a slight angle. And you have to have that to keep the top from caving in. Well, he tried all that and absolutely, it sort of worked. In fact, uh, the F5s are renowned, no, normally because Bill Monroe happened to play one. And if it hadn't been for Bill Monroe, he wouldn't have a modern mandolin. Man, he's singly responsible for the whole mandolin craze today. Without him, the mandolin would be extinct by now. So anyway, what I'm doing here is trying to rethink how this should be done. My sound holes are going to be up in this upper area where they're kind of out of the resonating part. And I have a lateral brace here and one down the middle. That's all I've got in here for bracing. Also, the top is left very, very thin along this edge. And what I'm going to explain in the next video is my method of measuring how thick the top is with my little gauge here. So let's go on to the next video.